so hey guys welcome to the station and uh, first of all let me know if you can see me properly you can hear me properly and i'm using quite new system now so some problem might happen but that's why i started early uh, five minutes early so that if any issue happen i will be able to fix within five minutes okay now also you can start asking questions and uh, i'll be covering all that hey sai thank you thank you very much and and also this is new system i think uh, uh, just previous day i used the same setup uh, for the saturday live and i decided to okay let's go with because this is this one is very advanced system that's why and we'll we'll see when i start the session you will see why i'm saying that hey vishek good evening good evening everyone just okay everyone joining so yeah we will we will start in our 7:30 time that is that you have discussed but yeah let's keep others coming and uh, i am sending mail are you guys receiving that uh, in proper inbox or it's coming in that uh, promotion step that that question i have in my mind so can you tell like you are getting in the promotion step or in the main main that main email that is main part hey dipali hi I'm much aware it finally thank you Hey Nihar good evening I was kind of you know I was also excited because this is the first time I am doing some training session so and I I did for companies to be honest and uh, some companies uh, but those are with small scale 10 20 30 Uh, once it's just fifty uh, max, and uh, now now it's uh, with hundred persons, and you are the first. Okay, so you are the first guys I'm doing hundred session online. That that's also one point. Most of the session what I used to did was I was uh, I have supposed like they will send me card and then I go to their office and then then do the session. Now it's uh, now it's all cancelled because of this you know corona and all. Uh, so yeah, I have my own projects. I work in Kiran there, this cloud, DevOps, and blah blah. So I do all that. Uh, so I don't have much time to go anywhere. Anyway, go now. We are not going. But yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay. So the pal is coming fine. Imanshu, proper inbox. Everything looks good. Okay. Okay, guys. So let us join. I know I started early just because to make sure that. you guys uh, all everything is proper because this system you see this webinar system entirely i have developed by myself and uh, that's why <laughs> i was like okay let's make sure that everything working fine or not and all that okay 18% join you know what i am also thinking maybe starting a whatsapp group um, so yeah let me know what your thoughts on that just with 100 you 100 people and uh, you know so you can you know sometime you might have question now it's not every time possible to reply by email or send a email for everything right so i'm just thinking now throw your thoughts what do you think should we start a whatsapp group or telegram group if you think then i uh, then i will start uh, considering it okay so it's up to you guys anything will fun in whatsapp um, that even uh, i was thinking of running a, a separate group in the linkedin or you know facebook somewhere so yeah just throw out your idea what do you think is better because you guys will have a lot of questions and every time you might not be able to reach me by email and that or maybe in the linkedin while i'm working but in whatsapp it's like more personal in it's near to my hand so anything that is uh, required i can I will reply or maybe other people can reply so looks like it's everyone joined and it's 7:30 So now we are going to start our station. Okay, looks like the idea is good. Okay, okay, yes, Vinay. That's a good, is a good idea. Okay, then, 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 okay, then we will think about the WhatsApp one. Okay. Okay, guys. So uh, people are joining. I think now is the right time. I will start the session, and uh, in between, anything. doesn't go or any problem feel free to let me know in the comments and i will be make sure to you know take proper step for that okay thank you now let's get started 
so vinay yeah we can have a you know uh, that also i think everyone got the mail for joining <laughs> now <laughs> but okay let's let's create a join and tell me people for the screens okay so i will just wait one minute i know people let's like mailing sir i'm joining and all so okay wait for that uh what's up is good thank you manchu so okay final we will have one community uh in linkedin maybe if you guys want to be admin you can do or i, I will create for you guys whatever is, you think is better and uh, i will create one whatsapp group okay so there also we can communicate good that's a good thing okay so this is the document i have created don't don't think i'll be seeing on the document i'll be showing you the concept i'll be explaining everything so don't worry just let's get started now no let me just give me a moment okay i think i'm ready i hope you guys are also ready okay so the topics we'll be covering today first one is what exactly is cloud uh, second what are the benefits of the cloud third why we should even learn cloud i mean okay there's benefit and all that but why exactly we should learn and what is the scope there and then what cloud option you have it's a big section i'll be explaining very thoroughly so don't worry don't worry and if you if you think you are not able to understand something feel free to let me know in the comments or ask question there is a ask question feature in the webinar or in the in the like uh, classroom so you can ask there and then the final part what skill actually you need the real life skill that i have worked in so many companies i have gone through actual projects a lot of lot of projects i don't even remember the number of projects i have worked on like many other uh, developers who are working for multiple years in the cloud so what are the actual skills required are we covering all that okay now let's start with what exactly is the cloud so here it is so what is cloud computing computing cloud computing is on demand delivery of it services over the internet with pay as you go model or pricing uh, instead of buying and owning maintaining everything all physical things you just you know rent it out and access their services okay whatever you need it you can just rent their services like says you can rent storage you can rent uh, cpu processing power you can uh, rent security as a service whatever you can think of like if you suppose it's a normal you have normal computer okay you have macbook pc and each computer you have processing the cpu and so you can process a lot of things okay, maybe graphic processing or text processing or maybe just playing a game so that's the kind of use cases you have in your uh, or maybe document processing that you do like make a ppt or you know what document we do all that right now think of that you can do all that now in the cloud you have google cloud i mean google documents and similarly in amazon every every cloud provider have their own solution and i think there are a lot of lot of free solution out there all in the cloud so you are you are you don't have to any more walk in your computer to do that you can just simply walk on those places and think about the software they are processing all that they are also running in this particular some cloud right and all that happening without i mean just accessing via web, web like website or maybe app but if you are not running in your lo local computer right that's what is the concept here it's about you have the you need cpu power go rent it you need storage maybe you have say big movies or maybe big project files uh, say 1 gb 2 gb 10 gb 1 terabyte it doesn't matter could be infinite for a particular cost cost could be you know cost is actually differ based on the cloud service which you choose but for a particular cost you can store all your data in a particular cloud okay and then you don't need a lot of space you can free up your local space think about the use cases that way similarly processing power you may work on something very important that you need in your local computer instead and run all like everything else in the cloud you can do that go for thing, same thing about networking suppose you want to run a website you can of course you can run from your local computer and, and you know public ip configuration if it is static ip otherwise dynamic ip it will always change now you can cannot uh, you know uh, practice you can do for maybe 4 5 days you can keep your laptop running there will be power cuts there will be you know disaster okay disaster happen and now i think very frequently these days and those reasons your power may cut off <clears throat> then your site will be not accessible anymore 
now think about the cloud why we are using cloud in the cloud if you use the cloud networking storage and computing all together and you host a site in the cloud it guarantees you 24 into 7 availability doesn't matter there's a power cut doesn't matter there is disaster doesn't matter anything your site or your application will be accessible no matter what that kind of guarantee flexibility or the benefit that cloud is giving instead of your local computer okay but just relate what is your local computer doing how and what are the same in the cloud it's just you are rent now in the very simple english you are renting out some other people resources that's what it is that's all about cloud nothing else not robotics and all that those may be part of something but cloud is a very vast thing we'll be covering all that but think about the basics because the first thing you need to clear out the basics if you go to any interview they will not ask you about particular very complicated problem they will ask basic question if you're going you to join as a fresher because i when when people come to me as interview i ask the basic question basic about storage or the cpu power or the pricing and the the freshers or the interns not able to answer that that's what need to be learned and you can go to any companies they will ask you about those questions and if you answer you are the winner you will get a job that's what the most important thing at the moment right okay here i have given an example in the view like uh, as a user device with your local computer or be local any client then in the server you are hosting you have servers and hosting databases application and all that okay that's just for the presentation but it's, i think it's self descriptive now what are the service services like uh, cloud providers aws amazon i think everyone already know about the cloud service i mean service provider at least what cloud or not that's a later thing but everyone know about what are the cloud service providers okay so the leaders are aws azure and google cloud okay remember if you want to get job in any anywhere you need knowledge at least in one of this particular uh, web service or vendor you can say okay or web service provider whatever you call it you need at least one otherwise it will be very hard to get a job in the cloud space remember that now next next is like what are the benefits of cloud okay we we have the cloud now now cloud giving us a lot of benefits okay first let's start with the cost saving i think in the initial just 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 few minutes back i think i talked about instead of local computer you are going to use the cloud why see you are no more utilizing your 24/7 and running your local computer right you are no more using your electricity you are no more using the storage so though suppose you are running a company where uh, most of the things can happen by the cloud and you don't need hundreds of computers you are saving that particular cost you are not doing the capital investment because at the beginning the whole infra cost the that is what's huge if you want to maintain everything by yourself but if you move to cloud you are on the pay as you go model whatever is requirement you pay for it and you can utilize it okay and that way you don't have to invest a lot of lot of like not a million rupees or anything like that okay it's just whatever you require you run that and that is your cost which is way cheaper than what supposed to if you want to run in your you know in a local company and all so that's what the biggest advantage then of course i i talked about 20.7 availability uh then we can talk about the security because all the cloud providers they are secure by default every single services or tools that you want to use you can only use after proper authentication and authorization without that you cannot or no one can actually access any cloud services that's very important point okay the security security is like a base of every cloud service provider every single cloud provider, you can say okay now another is the scalability now one of the main reason or the main problem you can say suppose you are a company you are running a small application in your, your local computer on now is only have 10 or 100 maybe that that much of customers now think about is increasing 1000 2000 10000 1 million your local computer cannot handle that if you even add 10 or 100 more computers they may handle for only few say hour and all and then all cpu will be overloaded all memory will be blocked and all that all process will get blocked and that will be a chaos situation isn't it i mean if you have if you have a paying customer they will start complaining about the services then why i given you money and i am not even able to access the services then why i will use your services i will go for someone else who have better uh, scalability or better uh, at least they don't understand about the scalability and all they say that better availability better usability better ux ui that what they understand think about that now if you go move to cloud you have the option 
for scalability. Suppose there is a no load, you can run one single instance. And there is huge lo load, say maybe sales running or maybe like your gradually your customer increasing. You can set rules like this should be the maximum limit and this should be minimum limit. And there is a, if the CPU is higher than 70%, uh, 40%, 30%, create a new instance. You can configure all that in the cloud which you cannot in the local computer system or local uh, local infrared, you can say. That's one thing, that is scalability. You have infinite scalability, uh, like kind of uh, way. Only the constant is cost. So consider cost before utilizing all that, okay? Now let's talk about uh, enhanced collaboration. So yeah, properly people, suppose in local computer and all that could be some networking problem, could be any kind of issue, but in the cloud, there are way less any problem like that. Suppose you I think a very easy example will be uh, our Google document. You can collaborate with working with other, other uh, people, right? Even in Google, uh, AWS have Cloud9, where you can work with another developer and code at the same time. Even in the, our, uh, that service now, in VS Code also you have su such kind of uh, solutions. So that what they've increased in, of the introduction of the cloud, this kind of feature you got it, okay? Uh, another is automated uh, updates on software. So in local computer software, if you want to update something, if you want to fix a patch, you have to come there and do run all the commands and all. Now with the help of the cloud, you can automate everything. In AWS particularly, I can say, there is a software, uh, there is a service called SSM, Simple System Manager, where you can configure all that and every time, like if there is a new patch available, you can automate that automatically. That should, that patch should uh, like apply to all the uh, instances and if there's any problem happen set the alert as as soon as the, all the admins or maybe the system managers will get notified so this kind of thing you can do uh, via the cloud so reduce carbon i think these are the more of the environment part since the people in the companies are not utilizing their services in the cloud they they're, they're like the, uh, the cloud server service providers they're expert in it and they know how to optimize it keep it you know environment friendly and all that and they do it, they do it very well, okay? That's why it's always uh, saving the environment because less carbon uh, production, production, okay? Okay, I think uh, I covered a lot, a lot of benefits. Now, go to next point. Now, why you should learn the cloud? I mean, that's the basic question if you if you ask to any uh, any person that, uh, okay, cloud care is good and all, but uh, why to learn cloud? I mean, that's the biggest question. So first thing is that all industries used to, you know, you know, you know, running their servers in local or in the local company in, uh, premises and all. But now with the days coming up, everyone moving to cloud and when they're doing it, they need cloud engineers, cloud architect, cloud pre-sales and all, all those kind of positions. Now think of that, That's, that many positions is not there yet. When, I mean, the resource are not there yet. There are resources, they are busy, like HR and you know, people are like calling, please join, please join, please join. And they're already maybe working in something or maybe they're seeking the higher offers. So since there is demand, there is demand, so the, and there is a less supply, you have more opportunities. You have like, uh, you get option to more salary. That's, that's what we need. I mean, even if we agree or not, salary is very important part of getting a job. Even think, suppose you are a uh, you know fresher or say you are uh, just getting started. Uh, if you have cloud knowledge, the salary you will get will be higher than those who don't have it. Keep keep that in mind. If you have cloud knowledge or even better, you have certification, be it uh, practitioner, be it uh, associate, I don't care. It has to be one, any one of the famous certification to have it in AWS, GCP or Google, sorry, GCP or Azure, at least one of these uh, service provider have certification of associate level, I will say, in any cloud provider. And that will give you edge over other participants, okay? That's very important. Now, there is cost involvement there for the certification is not free, 10,000 or around that, but you can save money and you can appear for the exam and look for the events happen throughout these companies they like in, the, in different groups they give a free coupon of 50 percent 100 percent like aws uh, giving 50 percent off i think even 100 percent off in uh, that cloud builders uh, that uh, builders program and so this kind of uh, group you should look for and join and participate and you get um, like this kind of feature so that's that's a part but having knowledge and certification 
will give you age will give you more salary than other participants okay or other candidates now uh, future proof career of course so cloud was there 10 years back even <laughs> more and it's going to be there many more years okay because more people are moving to cloud it's a simple thing about that a cloud will be there but new services will introduce over time and what you have to do you will be still in the cloud profession and all you just have to learn the new service that all you have to do so staying updated is a challenge which which you have to do otherwise there is no alternative there is no shortcut you have to learn it to stay relevant in the uh, job market okay but it's future proof career there are going to be a lot of lot of opportunities and there already lot of opportunities there if you know cloud you already you you will get a job okay but yeah you have to apply properly you have to have some credentials you need to show your skills to the world in this program i will i will be covering with a special session how to get highlighted and how to get job and all that so don't worry but uh, this kind of thing you should do okay increase professional profile now it's it's not just about like you know uh, uh, learning it and all that but when you learn it about basic cloud and all you will learn other things also like automation you will at least heard about it right suppose you work in a cloud and see there is automation feature okay there is devops tools there is networking and then you can specialize on this kind of particular uh, service points what will happen for this specialization your salary will be even higher than the normal candidates think about always in the salary perspective and your interest perspective so you might be interested in more of the computing part then focus on that you might be in the devops part like me and you can focus on devops all you can do so but the basic of the cloud is required go anywhere that the basic cloud is required so having basic knowledge of the cloud will help you choosing your next target okay so remember that part also now professional growth and future scope now it's not just about getting a job a salary you could just become a consultant like me and work for multiple companies now you are not working in a particular company but a lot of companies that you can do maybe you want to have your own startup uh, related to some cloud or on a product but any product uh, like need a ha have at least one application and one website right that you can develop by yourself so your cost savings so you don't have to stay dependent on other people you know what is required you know how to do it and you can achieve all by yourself okay that is important now high earnings of course i talked about all that but the more you learn the more you grow the more skills you have you will get more salary and that's that's the universal truth no one can uh, like take it from you okay now i know i'm going fast but we have a lot of points to cover ah now the main part like uh, what are the types of the cloud based on usage so this is all about the types and cloud options you have and we'll go slow on that part because understanding in this concepts are very very required that's why i'll go slow but make sure you understand if you don't understand feel free to ask the question in the ask question feature okay so don't uh, don't worry okay i'll be coming back now what are the cloud based on usage so cloud computing is available on three types of usage uh, public cloud like okay i'm coming that first public cloud uh, private cloud and then hybrid cloud what is public cloud so this is a publicly accessible framework when you can store data or use it as a virtual machine this can be done either by programming automatically like by sdk here individual does not have to invest time and effort in buying physical servers but can get started in no time public cloud are available pay per use basis so best example aws gcp and azure so you go there you uh, create an account you just uh, like spin an instance run something and maybe run for 1 hour 2 hour 3 hour and when you're done you're shutting down right you are no no need to do provisioning nothing like that kind of pay as you go model and all you only charge for that particular uh, resource that you use so this is public uh, public cloud and it's open to all and everyone okay now come to the private cloud now on there some points in the private cloud like uh, you know let me cover offered by third party providers available to anyone to the public okay and sells uh, scales quickly okay so these are the points i'll be sharing this pdf with you guys so don't worry if you don't have it okay i know a lot of question okay i will be answering all the questions okay so if you have any questions you can keep it coming i will be covering all that in between i know i will give you some rest and we will cover okay so hybrid cloud now uh, no private cloud cost okay so if 
one needs to have cloud exclusively for their organization. Suppose I'm IBM, okay? Or maybe more better example than that. Suppose your company have some regulatory compliance because some companies now, I mean, uh, it is a government companies required, the data could not go to public cloud. So if you go to public cloud, that means the data going to all other countries. And that's not good idea for the government companies. They need to keep all the data in local servers and that's a must in those cases. But you need scalability also, right? You need scalability, fault tolerant, high availability, all that how can you achieve? Public clouds are giving because they have the resource and all. You can achieve that via the private cloud. Where it's similar, but the access will be limited to your company, your people, and exclusively to you. The cost part will be a bit higher because, of course, public cloud people are the more people using, the less cost will become. But private is more to you, exclusive, exclusive access to you. That's why it will be more costly. So remember that. Everyone is going to ask you, like, what is the difference between public and private cloud? So you can, you should be able to see it. The, if they see what is the main difference, you will say the cost. Because public cloud is less cost, the private cloud is a lot more cost. Okay. Now, a dedicated professional, now, yeah, here also think a dedicated professional will be required to manage that private and cloud family network. So think about that. The cloud service provider, be it AWS, Azure, or whatever, uh, if it's a public cloud, they can manage things and all that, right? But if it's a private cloud, they should not be able to have the access, right? Until unless they're an insider. So that's why what they do is that they have a dedicated employee. Think about that. Dedicated employee means dedicated cost, and that's huge cost. That's the company have to pay just to manage the private cloud. Okay, remember that. Now, let's come to the hybrid, which is a mix of both. So you may run some application or some requirement on public cloud to save the cost and for better availability or better flexibility. And some data are very crucial, very important. It cannot be go outside. Some instances cannot be accessible outside. Those you run in a uh, like a private cloud. So combine, this is hybrid cloud. So both were private and public cloud utilizing okay so the you thing you can see from the definition also itself but I, I hope you understand so if we just up to this part anyone have any questions feel free to ask me in the uh, ask questions or in the uh, in the messaging section so anywhere any questions simply go and ask okay i know you're going to have questions so simply ask me otherwise i will move to the next slide Feel free to ask any questions. I think one concept, okay, I forget, okay. Uh, one concept you need to understand. I will uh, I'll go to the next slide. But before that, I think one concept I need to understand, you guys. What is client and server approach? Because whenever you are going to cloud and all, all that, the think about what is, like, why is this happening? So let me go that. Of course, you can ask many questions in between. So see, normally, Just a moment. Okay, here. So, what happens? Normally, say this is your device or say a laptop. What could be it? Doesn't matter. Sorry about my bad. Is the bad drawing and all? Now, this is this is the client device. Okay, this is client client device, and the cloud, which is means again just inter by accessible by internet to other people. There. We are running, we have uh, say CPUs, we have storage, like CPU, storage, and you have the networking, like going traffic outside or taking that uh, from the, taking the traffic to, that is we call it ingress traffic, ingress traffic that is incoming. And outgoing, suppose you want to download some packages like other cloud, you are downloading some packages here that you can do. So this cloud, now the, what is client server approach? So client, that is your, your local, uh, that is you, your devices, are the, you are the user. Uh, so you are the user, uh, user, and this is client devices. And that is communicating to this cloud. In cloud, we have servers running, okay? We have servers running, which is ultimately say, think about like another computers are running, okay? Okay, and that they are processing could be running side, could be downloading to some job, could be video encoding, could be processing a software, could be anything. And then this is 
giving the result back to in your browser okay that's what happening so you are you are requesting ultimately some request and response so you are requesting something that is the important concept there the request and the response okay that's the important concept in this uh, entire cloud because people will say cloud is and that but you have to understand the basics basics is that you are the user or maybe could be other users they are requesting something to the cloud could be application could be website and that website or api something whatever it is is giving response to uh, your uh, your uh, your uh, application so the user can see it and doing all that so that is what is the basic of this everything okay that is the basic requirement then come other things security you know advanced networking advanced computing requirement all that but this is the basic part basic thing we should be you know uh, should be taken care of first basic that's why the basic concept should be needed and need to be cleared okay now let's get back to our session and again okay one question yeah, let me first come back to the okay we came back so one question is that uh, in hybrid cloud who is responsible for data security now in hybrid cloud the the public part now there should be someone a cloud engineer or something who is uh, managing the pub, uh, uh, the public cloud for the private cloud also someone need to be dedicated so here will be two resources one dedicated for the private cloud and one dedicated or maybe multiple dedicated for the public cloud it could be some your developers or could be contract hiring like that but the private part it must be your organization staff okay that's the requirement here so yeah the data security the private part will be the company and uh, now yeah think about that there are services okay there are lot of database services lot of services based on the service they are giving it could be your responsibility or it could be the cloud service provider responsibility you have to check their services and see what who is responsible for the security part okay most of the cases the os the underlying you know uh, patches and all it's your your uh, kind of you know or maybe the security user may pass it should not be leaked to anyone that's your responsibility but infrastructure the hardware level the hardware should not fail in the hardware level no one should be able to hack in the hardware level that is the uh, service provider responsibility so that is what the basic difference is okay okay i see one question i need okay uh, it's ari saying that i uh, read that many company considering about security in the public cloud does it feature future all company will implement the hybrid cloud no it's not about that see just like i told you in the private cloud it's more of the data should remain in the company should not go to the out see ultimately in the private cloud they are not sharing with the world it's not public data unless you make it public they are just storing somewhere for the better uh, better availability or disaster recovery all those cases now some company don't want that they make sure that it must stay in our uh, local uh, local area or say in particular geographic area that's why they need a private cloud okay so it doesn't mean that okay it has to, it, it's in public it doesn't mean it's not secure public if you implement the security the iam policies rules properly it's as secure as the private cloud okay private is more of the local but that's fine that is secure it's very secure the private public cloud is also very secure but you have to configure each and every policy very properly like by mistake you should not be able to now i think uh, all the cloud servers provided are very clever they make sure you don't do it very uh, stupidly but some people are stupid they do it they make some uh, bucket accessible to public like you can say lazy people and that that came as a disaster in news and like like they are very secure file leaked and all that and all happens so make sure you make sure that the policy the bucket policy the storage policies are proper secure so that it's supposed to go to the person that is supposed to and not to the public that is a requirement okay how both and uh, pub and uh, private cloud and the uh, private cloud and the public cloud can be integrated so yeah all service uh, cloud service provider give the solution on the the uh, public as well as some specific services that they can use and run in their like outpost is there in aws in google or uh, google and uh, azure also they have similar services so they all all cloud service provider have service which allow the companies to run the services 
in a particular uh, area okay then you have that options okay now let's go to the next yeah but keep the questions coming if you have any questions feel free to ask okay no worries on that now the types of cloud computing we learn about the use usage basis right now there is type based on the what is the type of uh, what is the type of the cloud computing so there is mainly three type okay so there are three main types of the cloud computing include infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service each type of cloud computing provides different level of controls flexibility like you you someone is talking about the security part right very keep keep your eye on this one okay you will get the answer and uh, management so that you can select the right set of services for your needs i'll be covering all that one by one okay the first one is the infrastructure as a service so or ias we'll call it in short we call it ias so ias contains the basic building blocks of the cloud and uh, cloud it it typically provide access to networking features computer virtual or dedicated hardware like it, i told you right about cpu like renting out the cpus the storage and all that that's part the data storage space ias gives you the highest level of flexibility and management control over your infrastructure resources it is more similar to existing it resources with many it department and developer are in family okay i think you all go, you, from the definition itself you is very clear now come to the next one is a platform as a service so or in short you call it pass so pass removes the need of you to manage underlying infrastructure so in the is you have to manage the infrastructure but if you go to platform as a service you are not managing the infrastructure okay usually hardware and the operating system and allows you to focus in deployment and management of your application a very good example will be aws ecs where you develop the application and containerize it if you didn't hear about the ecs don't worry if you go to my youtube channel there are a lot of videos on um, like particular to aws uh, ecs so in this service you make a docker image and just run the docker image in the ecs and you don't manage the underlying hardware or the software that's aws responsibility so that is one of the very good example which helps you be more efficient so you focus on the development and the deployment not on the security and all that right you still have to manage security but not at the os level or the hardware level or the infrastructure level now this helps you to be more efficient as you don't need to worry about the resource uh, procurement capacity planning software maintenance patching that like i told you right and all other un uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting involve in running your application so you are not doing all that you are focusing on your development and deployment that's your focus become and that's how you can become more productive right so that's a very good uh, difference now coming to the software as a service i think you heard about the what saas saas so this is what saas is saas provide you a complete product run and managed by the service provider in most cases people referring to saas as uh, referring to end user application so what could be one example is the gmail where you don't care or worry about the security at least you do it is the login part where it is handled by the uh, google anyway and uh, you don't care worry about where in this world is running you do not worry about that uh, where your document getting stored if you using the g drive and all so that already taken care by the google and google cloud in behind the scene right and it is giving and to you it's end user application and that's one very good example of saas now you got the idea also just compare with uh, that uh, gmail and you will get the concept very clear here okay now that uh, now let's come back to the definition in most cases people referring to saas are referring to as end user applications such as web based email um, and with a saas offering you don't have to think about how the service is maintained just like i discussed and how its infrastructure is managed you only think about the using of particular software you don't manage the hardware you don't manage the software you don't manage the the storage anything you use the ultimate software okay now what it's not mentioned here is the cost i am keep repeating the cost part because this is very 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 important people miss the cost and do everything else cost is very important okay so what is the cost if you go for the infrastructure service 
in general the part unit cost will be lower if you go to platform or service in per unit base maybe per hour running cost cost i think easier example will be per hour running cost so suppose uh, to run a service in a infrastructure as a service ias model the cost is $1 okay if you go to platform or service cost will become high could be $1.5 or $2 that way if you go to software service model it could be $3 $4 just as a conceptual part i'm telling you that but if you think okay i am using the google drive and all for free even that's not free man there are like uh, millions of people using it okay and they have to pay 1000 rupees or something i think this recent rule right nothing is free if it's free then you are the product it's there okay so remember that part now let's i think now i know you have will have a lot of questions go to ask question and i want to answer it serially at the end uh, i think we'll 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 cover all the questions okay but i think the four slides are remaining so let's cover that i and see this document i'll be sharing with you guys so don't uh, worry about getting the document now let's go to next now what are the cloud deployment models we talked about the infra we talked about the like types of the cloud and all now with the deployment ultimately see you develop applications software and all that but you need to deploy it somewhere it cannot be forever running your local computer for that reason you have deployment models just like you know private cloud uh, public cloud think about like just compare it it's a bit different or entirely different but the concept is similar here first option is cloud so deployment deploying to cloud then deploying to on premises like people are like someone asking like what is the example of private cloud so it's similar to that and the hybrid cloud so i'll be covering all that one by one okay so don't worry first is cloud now what is like deploying to cloud suppose you are running i'll go to the this uh, like the definition but just to explain you have one application say your uh, react js application for example or maybe any front end application or maybe just a hello world web page that you push to any cloud service like s3 or ec2 instance and then making assign a public ip and point that public ip to a particular domain name and access by that uh, particular uh, domain that's the public or the cloud part on premise you have run, you are running the application locally or you know in your local infra on premise and then you have the static ip you are pointing your domain to that particular static ip it's on premise hybrid some are running on public some are on premise combined is called hybrid <laughs> that's how easy it is so now i will go through the definition part so cloud a cloud by application is a fully deployed in the cloud and all parts of the application Uh, run in the cloud applications in the cloud have either been created in the cloud or have been uh, migrated from an existing infrastructure to take advantage of the benefits of cloud computing cloud based application can be built on low level infrastructure pieces or uh, can be higher level services that provide abstraction from the management architecture and scaling requirement of core infra i know it's hard so complicated Now think about it in simple sense. You have your application could be any like Node.js, the React, or could be any application like storing of like uh, hosting the front end application in um, S3 or other clouds, and uh, maybe Node.js or back end application you are hosting in EC2. That's simple as that. Okay, don't think over complicated way. I know definition a bit complicated, but that's the official documentation I've copied. Okay, now on premises. Okay, and this is I think it will be very fair, easy to understand. deploying resources on premises using virtualization or resource management tool is something uh, co sometimes called the private cloud on premises deployment does not provide many of the benefit of the cloud computing but is sometimes sought its ability to provide dedicated resources in most cases this deployment model in the same company as uh, the legacy id infrastructure while using application management and virtualization recognition uh, virtualization technologies to try and increase resource utilization now the main part here is the, the scaling part okay in cloud you have infinite scalability uh, kind of uh, opportunity there but in pub the private on premise you have limited capacity you have all your resources and you can utilize that you, you cannot have like um, add resources more than what you have you have to buy or purchase then add it to your network or the computing resources then you can utilize the new resource you cannot gain it you don't have the flexibility 
to get it very quickly in a second or a minute on demand right you have to wait until the the resources say, say you need 72 gb 72 cpu and uh, say 80 uh, 80 ram 80 gb ram all those you can't have to wait until you get it from market but if you is cloud you are getting immediately think about that as an example think about the use cases that easier to remember that is very important to you know for your work now call about think about the hybrid cloud so what is hybrid cloud a hybrid deployment is a way to connect infrastructure and applications between the outbase resources and existing resources just i'm stopping you easiest example is aws outpost uh, and there are other services also which like you add your resources references to the cloud and then manage all that via the cloud one good example is here okay the most common hybrid cloud uh, deployment is in between the cloud and existing on premise infrastructure even now as an example ecs anywhere i made the recording but since on um, this all this session i will be maybe i will release tomorrow there i am releasing example where in raspberry power in your local computer you can connect your uh, uh, ec2 uh, sorry ecs and you can manage that uh, container application from aws cloud so that is possible okay this kind of service is making it possible and which is calling it hybrid and uh, uh, i think uh, and uh, grow or an organization infrastructure into the cloud while connecting cloud resources to the in let me just clear it, internal system okay so that what it is now i think so any question related to this uh, deployment models or maybe in the previous types of uh, types of cloud computing i'll be taking all that questions now i see one questions I have asked by sahil if based on the situation a company uh, need to uh, just a moment now so if based on situation a company needs to trans transit data from private cloud the uh, to uh, so private to public in hybrid and vice versa during the transition a data breach occur then who would be responsible for the same i think it's it will be the responsibility of the you like who is the responsible for the transferring but not the cloud because the moment the cloud service provider will give you security encryption the kms and all this encryption logic if you don't use it then this that's not their responsibility because if you encrypt it and if you try to transfer that then no one's even someone get it they will be unable to so encryption part is your responsibility that you must make sure it's uh, it's a it's a data transfer happening either by rest or uh, that is uh, like http ss ssl or like it's some certificate validation that kind of way secure way what i mean or maybe uh, in a way that maybe you just some you get a big uh, normally what happens aws have a snowball snowball is like a big device that you store all the data there and then you transmit that to a secure place okay to aws and they will then upload all the data by their own networking so this kind of way it's, it's more secure okay now i will see any okay, one question is there that asked by uh, sanket sir how much salary we can get after doing the solution arc certification it's it's not like like as soon as you get a certification you will get the job you need to have some hard and skill you need to show some skill you need to be able to manage on uh, on a cloud services create instance or service application development those kind of knowledge you need now how much salary it based on your skill level if you are if you have some kind of experience say one year two year and you have your skills then it could be around now based on your uh, educational qualification and all that it's it matters but if you are more skilled it could be more than 20 or 30 if you like blank or you don't have knowledge they don't even pay uh, but if you have knowledge you should uh, get more than 20 30 if you have like the, at this beginner level knowledge you should get at least more than 16 or 50k okay so that is what the basic level but if you are very highly like if you have professional level certification even you are just a fresher then expect at least uh, 50000 or 1 lakh salary okay now i think uh, yeah it's manoj saying what is ecs so ecs is elastic container service in my youtube channel i have covered this topic a lot and uh, i'll be covering in this uh, in this uh, training program also so don't worry okay now let's get uh, get back to our pdf and uh, okay 
so yeah any any questions you can ask at the end also no worries okay now next is yeah so the top cloud service providers so who are the top cloud service provider i think you already know about aws gcp and azure there is nothing new for me to like previously it was like you know few years back might have you, you have not known but now it's become more more common these days you must be hearing all this so these are these three are the the leaders okay these three are the leaders in cloud service providers as a, as a cloud service provider where do you get uh, all the cloud services the storage networking uh, security uh, transcoding of your application hosting app, uh, application now all that kind of solution these guys have already implemented and available for purchase so you can go and uh, like available higher you can go and uh, create account and uh, like run the services at the end of the month you have to pay for it so that's you can do by these services and these are the leaders but there are a lot of others also just as example there is uh, data lotion there is ibm cloud oracle cloud so other clouds also there but in general if you want to get job master any of these three cloud okay if you do that you will get job for sure now let's go to next uh, now this is a very sweet spot okay this is the part like what are the skills i mean you must have that question right what are the skills that you need to get a job in the cloud i mean i talk about cloud this and that i talked about is the cloud service providers i talked about the benefits the salary and all that but what are the actual or real skills that you need to get the job and that is what's more important here i think you you guys are eagerly waiting for this particular screen isn't it so let me tell you the basic cloud knowledge of course you're talking about cloud cloud service providers and all so you at least you basically you need to know what is the storage what is the computing what is the the networking part at least the basic security part security is the backbone of all the cloud service providers so you should know the basic of security that is a must okay that's why this is needed now this is what the basic part okay now come to the virtualization now think about all the cloud services uh, cloud service provider running it there is shared cloud there is dedicated uh, shared instances and dedicated instances okay while is shared or dedicated there is a os level virtualization going on i'll be explaining in a greater depth in upcoming sessions so don't worry but there in a single instance or single hardware there will be multiple people running their uh, uh, services okay mal running their applications that's a shared model so let's go virtualization and now let's talk about the containerization where you containerize the application say you have a node.js application okay to run the node.js application you need uh, some uh, os and all or some the uh, dependencies and you, you need to configure all that now that thing that you have to configure uh, all that like it's a complete package that package contain the os that package contain the uh, all the dependencies to run the application and that package contain the codes also if you do that okay if you do all that and container that using maybe uh, docker okay and there are other tools also now available so docker is most popular so let's say docker and that container you can run on any cloud like you talk about gcp you talk about uh, azure you talk about aws every single even digital ocean ibm cloud doesn't matter whichever cloud is a like a main leader if, if they're the main leader or if they're in demand there's a hundred percent security i'm giving hundred percent that 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 place i mean that particular cloud service provider must have a containerized solution where you can simply bring your docker image or you can uh, upload the docker image or the yeah docker image in that particular uh, cloud services own repository and utilize that image to run applications anywhere in that particular cloud could be as an example in aws you have ecs you have kubernetes like eks you can you have the elastic beanstalk these kind of services you can just simply bring your own image and run in the cloud that you can do okay okay now coming to the complicated but i know you guys thinking to become a cloud architect do we need to uh, learn the uh, programming and all that programming like c java c++ python go and what not you might be thinking that right so let me tell you it's not mandatory to learn programming okay but is mandatory just listen very carefully people if they don't listen that will be problem in the future if you want to come in the cloud learn linux full stop if you learn linux 
that's the huge thing okay learn linux learn how to manage linux some advanced basic commands advanced commands at least the basic command you should know otherwise it will be big problem okay learn that then i will highly suggest now some might say it's not required but if you want to grow your career in the cloud you want to sit in a position even higher than me you must know the self scripting because in a day to day basis or day to day job the self scripting you have to write if you are not in the tech maybe in the sales and all that's a different matter like the cloud preserves role role or cloud consultant role you just consult not write the solution but as a cloud architect or a cloud engineer or maybe as a cloud application developer these are have this this uh, roles have higher salaries and they have higher expectations okay that's why you need linux skills now for the linux uh, if you might be thinking linux i already made many sessions linux as well as self scripting i have made very good uh, videos is available in my youtube channel you can go and watch there and i maybe you know mail you all the details all the links and all maybe some other uh, linux tutorial that i have followed me past to learn the linux i will be forwarding as a mail just like i send mail i will be sending you a mail on that details okay so don't worry i will be giving all that so that's why i'm saying linux and self okay and, and don't worry i'll be covering linux in this uh, uh in this training program also so don't fear don't worry i'll be covering all that just listen carefully okay when i explain all that because sometimes it might feel very complicated but one, once you get used to it nothing is complicated i'm telling you because when i started around uh, say uh, around 8 years back or say then i i was like the fearing oh my god what is self scripting and now day and night you know if i close my eyes i can write the self scripting that became because i keep using it i keep using it and once you keep using something you get used to it and that's what is required here okay so that is there and uh, so yeah so self scripting linux uh, is a must i will definitely definitely suggest you programming is optional but having programming knowledge will make your life a lot easier what programming can go for go for python go for golang go for javascript if you go for this three javascript i would say is very good one because all the cloud service provider no matter which cloud provider service service provider it is they are natively supporting the node js and javascript other than that python what is that preferring so python and node as uh, uh, javascript is good to go addition to that if you want to go come to the devops part there you should learn for the uh, there you can learn for the go golang okay um that is there now what are the other skills required database i would suggest at least the mongo db and mysql skills that will be required okay because most of the classes application are running in these two cloud uh, these two databases so if you know these two databases you are good to go apis and json so while working as a cloud engineer or any any post you work if you any if you're in the technology field then you must know two things what is the api what are the api basics i'll be covering now i'll be covering the api get a ds in this training session so no worries not today in the upcoming one and the json what is javascript object notation in figure form ultimately is just objects and some data key like you can say key pair uh, key value pairs okay json where this value is utilized like you need see there are multiple clouds multiple platform multiple application but they need a common medium so they can communicate to do that you need json there is a common intermediary uh, data you can say using J uh, json data like one cloud to another cloud one um, application other application is very easy by the json data that's why is needed and the automation now i think automation uh, like uh, like you should be getting used to it like daily like say patching job or maybe uh, like implement uh, the automatic deployment all these are automations right like say you make a code change so our developer making a code change and that getting deployed in an instant so this is an automations right that you must know okay i'm not going for the big definition all you will get the document you can read it matrix analytics because uh, see matrix and analytics are very required why i'm saying that because uh, you need to know uh, where is the lo load happening say some there is some high usage in the cpu or high memory usage or high network usage you must have a way to track that and all cloud service providers will give you that solution okay so no worries just have to use their solutions or maybe you can use open source also there are very good open source solutions available you can go for that no worries now there is uh, i think the most important one uh, the most important of course the cloud service understanding and all but 
after that the most important one is the cloud management what is cloud management the cloud management sorry cost management the cost management now what is the cost management so every where you run the, like you run in any public cloud or private cloud or in on premise you must know what is the cost if you don't know what is the cost you will see problem and you might see the problem in getting jobs because in most of the interview you know if i take interview i ask them about the cost if you don't know the cost but i don't hire that's my honest reply so you must know what a part you don't have to know every bit and inches or like every single value you should know okay this service we have a cost involvement and there's have a free tri free trial and all this part or maybe if we uh, use like how suppose i'm asking you how to save cost you must know about what are the spot instances if you about aws you must know about the reserve instances you must know about savings plan because if you don't know it you are not fit to become a cloud engineer because people often ignore but one of the biggest responsibility for a cloud engineer is to reduce the cost reduce the cloud cost and uh, maintain the cost very low and with the better performance of course that's one of the biggest importance and some might feel that okay so that's very important now let's come to the uh, i think other points see other points are there i'll be in a next uh, session we'll call it but um, the main point i want to uh, talk about is the cloud service platform expertise so in the beginning i saw i told while uh, discussing all that where i told that uh, you have aws you have gcp you have azure there are the, these are the three main cloud service provider you must get expertise over any of that particular cloud now you you can ask me sir what uh, i should go for like which one i should choose i will tell you go with the amazon because they are the top top market leader then you want to go for the multi cloud go for the azure and then if you have time and interest or curiosity go for the gcp that's what i can say so start with aws and then go for the that's why in the curriculum also in this training program i have started like first aws then as well as gcp so make sure that okay you need to expertise okay now the session is today's session is complete i will be uh, taking the questions uh, i can take for five uh, i will have five minutes to cover uh, cover the questions so let's see what are the questions are uh, okay and don't worry about the document in linkedin i will uh, share the document and i will uh, send you a mail to all you guys uh, to download the document so don't worry so there's a lot of questions uh, first is sir i want uh, said if i want to learn private uh, private my one and any private cloud which one should go for like all cloud service provider is giving the private cloud you can now it's it's more of the is up to you so i will go with the one of the good example will be aws also giving private cloud option azure also giving go for the azure one because that is more people are using okay uh okay that's a lot of, okay let me go from down to up okay uh this is a lot of question i think i will i will develop uh one some uh, if i will just improve this uh, question asking mechanism so i can show this question in the screen okay so don't worry for now i will just go one by one uh, so i'll need more clarity on cloud and on premise deployment models okay let me go back to that so let me go back cloud uh, and on premise right okay so now what is the cloud and what is on premise cloud aws gcp azure any private cloud you push the changes to that cloud that is what cloud deployment model on premise you have local machine you are running in locally or maybe uh, another local machine in the network that is on premise okay that's easily i can explain okay maybe <laughs> i will explain okay let me explain this sketch no worries i know some things could be very hard to you know okay so so this is your local computer okay this is your local computer is you your computer okay and you're running in this some application okay application and this is on premise uh, sorry about my bad handwriting on premise okay and if you run 
this same application in like AWS, GCP, Azure, anywhere it is. I don't, I don't care. Any, anywhere. Okay, those servers. That is cloud. Okay, this is on cloud and this is on premise. If you run in your local computer, that's on premise. If you run in the cloud, uh, like in the uh, cloud services, any cloud services, that's on cloud. Okay, that's how is like an explain. Okay, mm, see, let me see other questions. Need a clarity that is done. Yeah. Please, once again, uh, brief on the deployment models as just did. Now, it's whether I'm saying I am working as a middleware administrator in banking sector around two years of expertise. Uh, which more opportunities, middleware uh, or the cloud devos? Cloud devos. No question asked. I mean, that's the truth. Uh, it's Dev, uh, Devdan saying that, sir, why there are less opportunities for cloud and devops graduate? Two, three expertise is needed or anywhere? No, no, that's not the truth. So, what do people don't understand that you have to target companies, okay? should target companies keep checking what your target so could be aws could be uh, like create could be any product company I, I suggest product companies could be any product company research on the company look for their precious program interns program any kind of program that they they should be they should be absent. reach out to their uh, hr reach out to their engineers they can suggest you how to come uh, join that particular companies you should look for that okay that's what important that people to miss maybe out of shyness out of could be anything they just don't have the will or they fear to ask don't fear to ask go ask them they ask 100 people 100 times if required and they will give response one time that's what your target okay that's where you can give the at least get the information first getting the information is the first step then next step is uh, first step sorry first step is the targeting part then second is getting information and third is keep applying keep applying that should be your target okay sir so if i want to learn any private okay, that, is, that is done sandeep could you please tell me is there any way you can incorporate use middleware administration skill in cloud such as messaging like mq web logic uh, i know these two services are different but uh, skills can be useful Okay, okay, I will consider. I will consider in maybe upcoming tutorials. I will think about it. Okay, no worries. Actually, yeah. I will say you are explaining in very layman way. So, so we can. So, can you please provide the same in your slide as well? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will, I will share the slide. Okay, no worries. Uh, I will share my this, uh, you know, this thing in uh, uh, LinkedIn as well as we'll email to you guys. Okay, so no worries. So, in this for learning lens. So, for you guys, I'll be having one session on Linux, very in-depth session, okay? Say one or two hour session for Linux and there I will explain everything. For already in my channel is there, okay? Linux as well as self scripting. In YouTube, uh, YouTube also you might have a lot of, lot of excellent session on uh, self scripting Linux, you can go for that. But I will be, I will be covering that, so no worries. And this is the uh, last question, sir. What is the difference between the data engineer and the cloud engineering? So data engineer are the more of the data part. They collect the data, they analyze the data, they produce meaningful uh, information for the data. That is data engineer. And the cloud engineers are most of the managing uh, infrastructure, managing instances, patching instances, uh, deploying uh, services, designing into solution like how the application going to communicate with the particular uh, cloud service. Like, combining multiple services and working together. All these are the cloud engineers and data engineers most of the data part. They also sometimes have to uh, configure the system and all that, but their focus is the data part. And as a cloud engineer, your focus is to uh, make sure application is secured, uh, it's running properly without any fault, it's um, uh, auto scaling is there and all that. Like one of the stability part, your, your uh, job is there. Okay, uh, I have covered a lot of things. And uh, again, thank you for uh, staying this long. I know this is a long session and you guys are here there from the long. Uh, and uh, I'll be sharing that uh, this session on like, not this session will be not everyone. Uh, this uh, document will be there for everyone. I'll be mailing you. Feel free to share this document in LinkedIn and tag me if you need it. 
just tag me that will make sure that you are sharing is happy to i'll be happy to see that you are sharing the document so i'll be mailing you that document share it in linkedin and see in linkedin you should always make your own video like suppose i give a tutorial okay i in my uh, training session i show something very good i'll be of course giving you some document for that you try that out make a demo and show me in the linkedin i'll be very happy on that okay and see that's not about making me happy the more you show to the world the better opportunities you will get okay so keep in that in the mind okay ah uh, okay now i think it's a long session um how to get job uh, first job in the cloud i i think i just talk in the video on that part can you cover how to deploy three to application aggregate in the cloud yes that's on my plan does uh, need same skill in the cloud this uh, does sri need yeah sri also need same need same maybe the deployment part they need to focus more on the scalability part Uh, Sandeep, uh, is Piyush saying, Sandeep, can you suggest some small projects? Yeah, I'll be sharing that information. Okay, I'll be sharing all that. So please say some good cloud engineering or sample projects. Yes, I have planned everything for you. So don't worry. In this uh, training session, I have already thought of that. In the upcoming days, I will give you more information. That okay, guys, this uh, it's an awesome session. It's an awesome questions. If you still have any questions, you always. have option to simply go to linkedin and send me a message if you feel if you think uh, you need to add me add or maybe in the i think you already have my email address contact at sandeep.dash.in right you can simply trigger me email of course i am going to create one whatsapp group and share that uh, like joining link with you guys join that okay thank you thank you very much again for this uh, you know joining this session and i'll be sharing you the document link shortly Thank you thank you bye and uh, have a nice day ahead okay bye good night